Hello and welcome to the Snake Bite, our weekly sports show that airs every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Alongside Kenzie Council, I'm John Kristovich, and here's what the mocks have been up to since we last saw you. We start in the world of swimming, where the women's team took third place in their first contest of the season at the UNF Aquatic Center in Jacksonville. The mocks battled high-profile teams like the University of North Florida and Florida Gulf Coast in their first competition of the year. Florida Southern earned 519 points, edging out North Florida, as well as conference rivals Rollins and Florida Tech. Elizie Pelletier helped lead the way in her Florida Southern debut as she finished second and third in the 50 and 100 meter breaststrokes. The men's team saw even more success at the first meet of the year. They took first place, defeating fellow SSC opponents Florida Tech and Rollins. The highlight of the meet was the relays for the mocks as they took first place in every single relay race to help push them to the top of the pedestal. Everyone from veteran Brandon Dyke to newcomer Kyle Mikuloff performed well as FSC looks to continue to the success from last year's NCAA Championships appearance. Both the women's and men's teams are set to be back in action in two weeks as they'll travel to Winter Park for a meet against the Rollins Tars. It was another difficult week in soccer as both teams took losses this week. Last Wednesday, the men faced off against Rollins at home, enjoying a 2-1 lead until the final five minutes when the Tars tied it up. That game would go on to finish as a 2-2 draw in double overtime after a lengthy weather delay. The following Saturday, James Meehan scored a goal on a penalty kick, but it wasn't enough for the Mocs as they fell to the number 9 ranked Nova Southeastern Sharks. Both the men's and women's team will be back in action this Saturday as the men take on the Lynn Fighting Knights on the road while the women get another conference game at home. And Kenzie, the good news for both teams is that they were finally able to put some numbers on the scoreboard after being offensively shut out. The women's team battled back from a 3-0 deficit on Saturday, but despite a two-goal effort from Caitlin Lowry, they fell just short against the Sharks. The Mocs were scheduled to have a game last week against Rollins, but yet again, that game was delayed and eventually postponed to a later date due to lightning in the area. This week, we had the chance to catch up with junior Courtney Chomko, one of the leading goal scorers on this Moccasins team, to chat with her about what the Mocs start to the season has looked like. Thank you for being here with us today. Talk to me. A really hot start to the season. Now, you went 3-0. How did it feel to kick off the season with three road victories? So I think it obviously just like set the momentum, and I think we're really going to carry it on for the rest of the season in conference. But I think confidence was high. We were ready to go every game. We were on. We were hot. We were going, scoring goals a lot. So that was just a great start to the season, and it was so, so much fun. Now, offensively, you guys are scoring goals, but also defensively, Jenny Staten is starting the season with three straight shutouts. How has her performance really helped you guys hold your ground through the season? I think, like, even with even, like, the little team mistakes, she's there to catch us no matter what. Like, she's the biggest safety net in the back of the net, and I think we can trust her so much, and her amazing saves that she's had so far from the season has done us so great in the back. Okay, so now you've been here since 2019 along with Staten. You've watched this team progress. What have you seen improve, especially here in the last two years? So basically we have this huge team chemistry. A lot of the players are like relatively now, like the older class above me and then my class. We really have just like great this connection. And I think that's really helped us on the field, just like with the ability to move the ball between each other. It's just like this great fluid between each class and like just the ability to play with each other has just been, I think, showing with our performance on the field. And one of the big differences between this year and last year is now you finally have fans back. What does that mean for you guys? I think it's just a lot. I mean, if you saw like at one of our last few home games, like just having people there cheering us on it, just like the adrenaline rush again is just so exciting and it f feels so good to finally be back out there. So I do have to ask now, we've had lightning delays for almost all of your games now, including the one last week on Wednesday that delayed that game. What is the mentality like when you get your game canceled either right before kickoff or you get postponed in the middle of the game? What does that do to y'all's mentality? So I, with our team especially, like we don't take it as a negative. We take it as like, okay, let's look at back at our game, what we've done so far, what can we do to improve and use it as a way to like collect our minds, calm down if we need it. But I think we look at it so positively, just like what we need to do better. And I think we come out so much stronger because of it. So now looking ahead, you have a competitive conference schedule. Pretty much every game from now on is going to earn you points. What's the team mentality with every game being a big one from this point forward? So basically each game is three points. Each game we go in, we have our head set on the prize of getting those three points, getting us closer to the conference finals, and just winning every game we can. We know every game is going to be a battle, so every game, every three points matters. Again, that's Courtney Chomko, junior midfielder on this Moccasins team. The women's team is now 3-4 and four on the season, while the men move to 1-4-3 and three this year. 
Both teams have a busy October chock full of conference matchups. That's right, John. The men's soccer team and women's soccer team actually has a slate full of games this month, with the men's team having seven games and the women's team having six games. On the men's side, they actually failed to finish for the second time this season by giving up another lead um, to late in the game to Rollins. But it did end up ending in a draw, which was good. And then James Meehan this weekend on Saturday got his goal, but ended in a tough loss to number nine Nova Southeastern. They do have a game coming up against number 15 Lynn. On the women's side, Caitlin Lowry had her second two goal game that ended in a tough loss. But on the bright side, it did end up breaking their shutout streak. Yeah, really a tough week for the Mox in terms of soccer, but the positives to take. A, you know, the men's team, James Meehan scoring against a very good Nova Southeastern team. And then, like you said, failing to finish there late in the game against Rollins, you let up another goal with five minutes to go. But in conference games, it's so important to be able to at least get a point out of the matchup. Now, I say it's so early in the season, eight teams at the end of the day are going to be able to make the conference tournament. And with the resiliency that we've seen early on from both sides on the men's and women's team, I'm not too worried about how they're going to perform once they get there because, you know, anytime you get to the dance, you have a chance. And for the men specifically, They've got some really tough opponents in the SSC, the Lynn Fighting Knights, obviously the Nova Southeastern Sharks, who they just were defeated by a couple days ago, and then uh, the Tampa Spartans. They're all 3-0, and and the Lynn and Tampa have each won six consecutive games. So it's going to be tough, but as long as you can make it to the tournament, I think both teams have a great chance. And I, I say that the women are on a four-game losing streak, but like you talked about earlier, it's so important to just get a goal. And I think for the Mocs, they went down early, 3-0 in that game. Coming back with a pair of goals from Caitlin Lowry, that's a, I think you know, once you get one goal, you start to open the floodgates a little bit. So they're on a four-game losing streak. They're right now in about the ninth spot in the conference. I trust in their abilities to get back and, and do a, a good job again this weekend as they do take on Lynn. It's as good as opportunity as ever to get back on track. Also this weekend, the volleyball team will head on the road to Boca Raton to take on the Lynn Fighting Knights at 4 p.m. It was another exciting week for the Mocs, who improved to 6-2 and two on the season and 3-1 and one in the Sunshine State Conference. The team swept Florida Tech in three sets on Friday evening, headlining by 16 kills from Mackenzie Peterman and 27 digs from Beatrice Formalon. On Saturday night, Florida Southern dropped their first conference game against the Barry Buccaneers in four sets. Yeah, and Kenzie, tough loss to the Bucs, but they're going to have to put that one behind them and look ahead to the next two weeks because there are going to be some big ones. First off, this Friday night, we're taking on the Lynn Fighting Knights at Lynn the following day, Saturday, at Palm Beach Atlantic. And then you've got more matchups the following week. Next Tuesday, the number nine ranked Tampa Spartans, and then the number 23 ranked Nova Southeastern Sharks the Saturday following that. Both of those teams are 4 0 right now, and they'll actually compete against each other next Friday. So, some compelling matchups in the SSC. It's going to be fun to watch. I like what I've seen from the mock so far. They've really shown that they can compete amongst the big dogs taking Barry to four sets. They're going to be really good. It's going to be a, a tough test for them in the next coming weeks, but we'll see just how legit this team is. I'll tell you who is legit. Beatrice Formalin, who picked up her second Defensive Player of the Week award this week. She collected 52 digs over the course of the weekend, and for that, she's now fifth in the nation, averaging 6.15 digs, digs per set and first in the Sunshine State Conference. We had Tierra Porter on the show last week. If you want to check out that interview, just go ahead and look us up on YouTube, in other athletics news this week, brothers Johnny and Clay Tucker are pacing the men's golf teams as they began their season at the Cougar Invitational on Monday. After day one, the team was in eighth place among 13 teams in a star-studded competition. The women were in action earlier this week as well, competing at the Savannah Lakes Invitational hosted by Lander University. Senior Elizabeth Harding had the mocks in a tie for eighth place after day one, shooting two over par to lead the mocks in their second competition for the year. For complete results on both the men's and women's tournaments, check out fscmocks.com. The men will compete on Monday at the Shark Invitational hosted by Nova Southeastern, while the women will return to play next Monday on the 11th. Elsewhere in the athletic world, Florida Southern hosted and competed in the International Tennis Association South Regional Championships, which saw rivals from across the region compete at the Winnie Warden Tennis Center. It was a quiet week for both cross-country teams as they had the week off, but will return to competition this Saturday for the Division II National Preview, hosted by St. Leo. And finally, our newest segment, This Week in Mox History. 
On September 30th, 1995, volleyball player Amber Jekyll set a new record for blocks in a game, achieving 19 total blocks in a five-set victory over Air Force Academy. That record has stayed untouched since 1995. That's all we got for you this week on The Snake Bite. I'm Kenzie Council. He's John Kristovich. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next Wednesday at 1.